Welcome back to the Race Coordinator um, Race Configuration Tutorials. Um, this is part three. I don't know how many parts we're going to have, but we're on a 10 minute time constraint, so each segment will be no more than 10 minutes long, and I'm trying to stop at a good place rather than just in the middle of talking about a property. So um, this is a very high level discussion of the properties. I'm going to go through them one at a time, um, and we're not actually going to set any race up or anything like that. We're not even going to use any of the properties. We're not going to do anything. I'm just going to talk about them, explain what they do, how they work, any properties that are related to them and are affected by them and whatnot. Um, and in future tutorials, we will talk about, um, we will actually set up specific race formats and specific. we will set up specific races designed to demonstrate this, the different properties that you may need to see and, and see what they do and how they work. Um, so for now, um, the, the second tutorial in this series left off. Um, I just finished talking about the heat callouts. We're in the heat setup with Race Wizard. Um, so we're going to just move on from there and carry on. If you need to see any of the properties um, above this in this list, um, check the first or second tutorial in the series. Okay. In fact, I would start there and just see, you know, they're, they're all in sequence. So, I mean, it's lengthy, but there's a lot of information to get out. Um, so we're going to move on right now and go to the auto advance property um, of a race setup. Auto advance um, is the amount of time a race coordinator will wait before automatically going to the next heat in our race. Why is this useful or why is this important? Well, in conjunction with the next property, auto start, you can use these two properties to create a hands-free um, race environment, meaning you can set up an auto advance time where you wait on the previous heat so people can see who's on deck, people can see the, the, those heat standings by just sitting there and looking at them. They can get ready for the next heat, they can do whatever they need to do, but race coordinator after X amount of seconds will automatically go to the next heat. And why is that important? Because if you automatically advance to the next heat, the next heat, if you configure the auto start timer, will automatically um, will automatically start the rate, the heat, after this amount of time in seconds. Um, so the auto start timer, um, you can use one without the other, um, especially the auto start timer without the auto advance timer. Um, however, they tend to make a lot of sense together. Um, the auto advance timer especially doesn't make sense if the auto start timer is zero. Um, but you can do whatever you want. It's completely up to you. Um, setting both of these things, you can calculate how long the end of the previous heat, when, when, the, when the previous heat ends, how long until the next heat starts automatically, hands-free, no race director um, intervention whatsoever. Um, specifically, it is the auto advance time plus the auto start time. That's how much time from the second the from the moment the, the the current heat you're running ends to the moment the start sequence for the next heat will start. Um, that's a very useful thing if you're trying to keep the ebb and flow of a race night going, especially if you've got larger races. Um, you can set one of them to like one or two minutes, one of them to one or two, the other one to one or two minutes, and you know, in, in basically two to five minutes or whatever, you know that one heat ended and the next heat is beginning with or without your drivers. Um, and I need to emphasize that with the auto start. Um, property, it will start the race whether your drivers or the cars are on the track, whether they've switched cars, no matter what you've done. You can actually pause the auto start timer as a race director simply by uh, simply by going into the race director menu and, and saying pause. Um, that'll abort the timer and then the race director will have to manually start the race. Um, you can do that, you know, if there's some kind of emergency on the track, some driver has to be late for whatever reason. Um, once it's paused, you can't restart it race director will have to start for that particular heat. After that, that new heat is run, the whole thing starts over again. The auto advance timer will start. The auto start timer will start, um, you know, as if it's never been paused. So use those, and you can be hands-free. Um, just as a side note, um, if you also want to be hands-free, the call buttons are set up not only to cause yellow flags during a race, um, which we'll talk about um, in a, actually in the next property, um, a little bit anyways, but um, they can also be used in between heats to advance to the next heat to start the to start the current heat and to abort the start timer uh, the start sequence in the current heat um, it's really nice it's another way to be hands free without the the auto start and auto advance timers if you if you want an undefined amount of time between heats but you want to control it without going over to the PC you can control it from the track on a, on a call button um, in fact that is exactly how I race um, I don't use the auto start timers because I'm slow sometimes and whatever um, but I don't want to have to go over to the PC to start the race either, so I use the call buttons to do that. Um, that brings us to the call button delay. Um, this is specifically for during a race. You can assign when the when the when a driver or a uh, track marshal or the race director hits the call button um, on the track. Um, 
the race will go into a yellow flag. That'll cut power if you have relays, but it will it will also stop counting laps until until another green flag until the race is started again. This call button delay can be used to penalize essentially a driver that caused the yellow flag in the first place. So if you've got if you're allowing the drivers themselves to hit the call button when they crash, for example, um, you might set this to, to one, two, three, four, five, six seconds. And what will happen is race coordinator will go into a yellow flag, but it won't cut power to the track, and it will allow laps to occur. And after the delay happens, then it will cut power and stop counting laps. And the idea is, is that if, if driver number one crashes and hits the button, maybe he should be penalized three to five seconds for that crash. So in that three to five seconds, the other drivers can continue around the track, and he cannot because he's obviously crashed, and that's why he hit the button. Um, you know, if you set it to zero, when you hit that button, the uh, yellow flag will come out immediately, and the default value is zero to not penalize anybody. Um, it's typically assumed, at least, um, you know, by me, that um, the call buttons are under the control of track marshals and the race director, and so when you hit it, you want it immediate. Personally, I actually put a delay on it because I'm I am my own track marshal and my own director, and I run in, in my race heats in it as well. And so, if I hit that button, I want to penalize myself for doing so because I've typically done something really stupid, like full throttle off my hairpin or something like that. So that brings us um, so that's it for that. And we'll go to the next property, which is the practice best laps prefix. Now, this is a um, an audio file you can assign. And if we look down here, um, it's assigned a really long path, data, audio, English woman, W underscore practice underscore. Notice there's no dot wave or anything. Um, this is the prefix to a series of wave files. Um, I don't know if you can read it in the text here, but um, as an example, the way this is defaults to, um, if you supply on an eight lane track, for example, if you supplied eight of them, you'd have practice underscore one dot wave, two underscore two dot wave, underscore three dot wave, underscore four dot wave blah blah blah. What happens is is that when um, when a driver in a practice race gets a best lap for that lane, um, what'll happen is it will use the particular call out corresponding to this lane to that lane. So if it's lane one it'll use practice underscore one dot wave. If it's if it's lane four it'll use practice underscore four dot wave. Um, and it's a way for during a practice race for the driver to get an audio cue that they indeed received you know, a comp, you know, got a best lap for their time. So a typical usage would be for the driver to come on during practice, clear the lane data so there's no no lap times at all, and then as they start running laps, they'll see, hey, they just got their best lap. Two more laps go by, hey, they just got their next best lap, next best lap, next best lap. So they can get an audio cue that they are indeed improving. Maybe they stop for a second, tweak the car, don't clear the lane data and continue to run. If they don't hear the best lap sounds, they can assume they didn't help improve the car. If they do hear it, they can assume they improve the car quite a bit, or maybe the drive, you know. So it's just a nice little cue during practice for the drivers to hear that they are indeed improving their performance. Again, if you clear the lap, the lane data on a practice race, um, that will reset everything, including the, the best lap time, and so you'll start hearing it over and over again, and you can, you can use that as your cue. Um, the heat view is not actually a property, and you can see here it's empty. Um, uh, it's because I don't have a, I don't know why it's empty actually, but what this will do is it, once you have a, a legitimate race configuration, which clearly I don't, um, oh, in fact, that's why, because I selected custom rotations, but um, what it'll do is, this is just, if, and this is a feature of the wizard, and I believe the management screen has this as well, but it'll show you the, the heat rotations based on um, what drivers you've added to the race, to the driver's racing screen. So here I've added 20 drivers. Um, basically as if I was setting up for a 20 driver uh, track. I can't scroll down here because I'm not on that window, but you can see the 10 and there's there are actually 10 more. And so what you'll see here in this view is nothing more than the heats for 20 drivers based on the rotation sequence, um, rotation configuration that I've made. Um, pretty useful, it's really nice. You can see how different properties affect the heat rotations as you select them and, and do things. Um, you can always come back to this at any time. Anytime you change a property, the, the, uh, the heat view here um, will be updated accordingly. Um, that's all the time I have for, for this tutorial. Um, I'm going to pick up right where I left off here on the scoring setup in the next one. Um, thanks. Keep on listening.